so I might not be looking in your direction. Um, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, yeah, show you how VR works and uh, a creative workflow within it. So within VR, there is, uh, in essence, two ways you can work. One is voxel-based and the other one is surface-based. Um, Adobe has two programs out there which are voxel-based. Uh, the voxel-based ones feels a lot more like clay, where you're really like adding mass, removing mass, uh, smoothing it out. It's a lot closer to like sculpting programs like ZBrush. Um, but the other one that we'll be doing today is a gravity sketch. It's a free app, so if you have uh, um, any Oculus set, you can just uh, run it. It is also one that works uh, like native on the headset. So you could just sit on your sofa, do some sculpting, um, it all works. Um, right now I am connected to the computer because otherwise I couldn't be showing you anything. Um, but this program is surface-based. Uh, you see a lot of people use this to actually design shoes is a big thing. Uh, cars, they do a lot of cars as well. Um, and that's kind of like the, the, pretty much the product design industry uses the software a lot. But it's also slowly getting a lot more popular with concept artists because with regular 3D, you're always very much already like kind of planning your draw or your My mic, oh, there we go. Um, you, you are a lot more static in your workflow. Like you might use some modifiers to make it look crooked in the end, but during the creative process, it's all very static. You're very much like, okay, I need a wheel, wheels round, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what I've noticed with this workflow in VR is it's very hard to have like perfect control like you have in 3D, uh, in like a Blender or Maya or 3ds Max. But on the other side, it does kind of add a little bit of sketchiness to your um, 3D files, uh, that after you render them, they actually are a lot more dynamic as if it was a sketch with, uh, on pen and paper. Uh, and that's what I really liked. And it's also a pretty fast tool for quick iterations. Um, so yeah, today I just, I'm gonna make something, talk about what I'm doing. If you have questions, let me know. And I would say let's, uh, Let's get started. And yes, we, we have a mic for questions. I can, um, if there are some questions, we can uh, let you know. So, okay. So, one, two things I did beforehand was I created a quick, um, uh, what you call it? A little guide for scale, so we can see uh, what we're doing. Um, and uh, I created this one little single object in the middle, which is gonna be the base of our body. Uh, I did this beforehand because I wanted to be dead center. Um, so the first thing, I was planning to make a creature. So I will use this line that you have where I can add points, remove points, um, and then also like individually move them around. I'm gonna use this to uh, kind of create a, a base, I, I would guess you would say spine, spine with some volume. Um, I also had some, uh, where is it? Some reference for myself. Oh, they're all the way in the bottom, which is great. Come on. Ooh, there we go. So these were some sketches I did uh, for inspiration. Of course, the nice thing is with Gravity Sketch, because it's so free form, you actually can also use that to sketch. Like you don't necessarily need to pre sketch anymore, but I still like it. Um, so let's see. Maybe if we try to make this like. Um, this guy over here, like the little uh, little chocobo dinosaur thingy me geek. Let's just give that a go. So for that, we would need to start kind of creating uh, a neck and uh, a body base. You can individually scale points up and down uh, after you've already like uh, drawn a line. Um, so I'm just gonna use this to kind of try and get a, a base loop, uh, like a base volume going on for how thick the neck should be. I'm not adding a little exit for the head because I've, I've noticed it's a lot easier in the end to move the head around for to like pose the creature when it's not attached to the, uh, the base shape. And let's see, it's pretty, it's pretty thick ass, so let's, oh. Let's make that a little bit 
bigger. So, so this in essence could be our, where am I? I hear him. Our base starting line. Say so like, okay, that's good. Now I'll turn, and that's why I made this line before, and I'll turn on the mirror settings within the uh, uh, file, and I can already see this is not mirrored at all, but let's kind of put this one a bit more in the middle. Yeah. But now everything else I'll be making will happen on both sides, so that's just speeds up the process, which will be nice. So then we're gonna do some lags, so we need some, uh, oh, I will put it to, so you have multiple, I guess I can quickly go over this, you have a lot of tools, um, most tools you can either do just you click and you drag and it will just create whatever you just drew in space. Uh, this one is the one I tend to use the most uh, when I'm thinking stuff out where you can go from line to line. Um, but these are just stuff you can change in your tool setting. Um, if you don't always want to press the button for tools, you can also just grab your menu and put it up in the sky, uh, which is pretty good too. So you can kind of create your own little working space uh, when you go along. But as you can see, the mirror works now, so now we'll be on two sides. So let's make some, some thick ass legs. Why, oh no, I cannot do that yet. Uh, so it's pretty thick. Um, and now when I edit the line, I can still uh, start to like change things around, uh, play around with the size of set legs, move the joints, or the things that I think will be the joints in the end close together. Maybe add some lines to break up the shape even harder than, or rougher than it already is. And, you know, kind of looks like a, a thing. And another one. Let me make the one kind of, oh. This. Mm -hmm. Just sit there a bit more straight. So, there we go, look at that. It's a little chocobo thing we do. This bit bigger. There we go. Yeah. I think I'll remove one. Still, if we or take it back anyways. But the nice thing is it's fast, it's, uh, and a lot of these, like, you don't necessarily, you can always change this later on, which I really like. It's a pretty non-destructive uh, workflow. Uh, what else? So I do think the stomach is a little bit thicker. Unfortunately, some of these, like, tools, unless I would scale everything up a lot or down a lot, I mean, I could play a bit more with the volume. But now I'm just gonna add some, some extra lines to uh, thicken out the, uh, the stomach area. Oh, other way. And so it, it will not create like really nice geometry. So if you're thinking like, oh, I'm gonna do some, some sculpting and then immediately, I don't know, port it into a game engine, that's not really uh, what, at least for me, it's used for. I do know that the people that do do product design, they will turn on all the options that give you more like a, what you call like more measuring tools and they will actually really try to create their object on a real size. And so for example, they could 3D print it or whatnot. Um, but for me, that's not the case. So I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna make it as, what do we call concept RT as possible. Um, the other one I use a lot after I kind of say like, okay, this, this kind of looks like a good base to start from. I use the volume uh, tool that they have and it's pretty much, um, it will trace a volume based on how you like move your hand, right? So every point you would add to this piece now would be like the, the next end point of this volume. And uh, yeah, that's just, uh, I think very, it's so fast. Um, so for if you just wanna go and add some volume now, so let's say we have to, okay, this is a bit thicker over here. So you just start to add a little bit of volume there, trying to thicken out the, uh, the leg. If you feel like it's, too flat, like right here. Uh, if you just increase your brush size, the end points will be a lot rounder as well. So we're just gonna try and get some, some, some shapes in there, some little blobs that kind of mimic anatomy, <laughs> but it's not really anatomy. But it's, it's, 
it's often enough to have like a, a very quick 3D sculpture of something and then just throw it in Blender with a good texture. Uh, and if you kind of know how to uh, like uh, paint on top of it, uh, this 3D is often enough of a quality to work from. Uh, but you'll still have all the nice things of having like realistic lighting from, uh, from Blender. <laughs> now don't forget to sing while you're doing your 3D sculpts. It's always very important. Mm -hmm. Gun. Here. So yeah, like I mentioned before, if you have any questions or wondering about anything, feel free to ask. That's why I'm I'm here. No questions. Very good. Let's try to thicken up this bit over here. There's one question. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a basic question, not about the workflow or something. Uh, last time I tried sculpting stuff on my quest, I was I was a little confused. Is Gravity Sketch discontinued, or is this the regular free version, or was there an update? Which is the app to get? I was wondering. Um, it's it's still very much updated. Like it's uh, very much in development. I also don't know if they plan on later or down the line either make um, uh, what you call it like make a make a workshop thing or like a store where people can buy pre-made assets, or if they go off the route that they all actually start to charge for the program. Uh, the progr uh, the program. Right now, as far as I know, it's it's yeah, it's still being developed. They do yearly. Um, conferences called Around. It's also free. You can just sign up on their website. And this is pretty much a week-long uh, uh, schedule of talks from different people out of different industries. So you had a lot of people from the car industry. There will be some people uh, from um, uh, the, the clothing industry, like from Nike and Adidas. Um, then there's a lot of freelancers that do their talk. Um, like Scott Robertson did a few of them, like a pretty famous uh, product slash concept artist. Um, so yeah, it's still very much uh, a very active uh, developed program. Uh, it does mean that like the last patch, for example, they revamped the entire interface. So there's definitely um, still like big changes coming down the line where they, they're not too afraid to throw everything a bit uh, uh, in the... Uh, yeah, to have like a new look at things and see if this works better. Um, I hope that kind of answered your question. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it did. Just relaying the answer. So let's see, let's do ahead. So now we're just gonna try and get like a cool head shape going on. Yeah, uh, uh, so you kind of look like a duck right now, so I'm running one once. Oh, it's a bit too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll try fishing up, but uh, Again, so if I look at it, I think the head for me is a bit too big for the rest of the body. So let's just take it on, scale it down a bit. Um, the controls are very meant for like kind of what you know from telephones, right? So like two fingers is drag or a scale or zoom, I mean, sorry. Same here. If I push both triggers on my controller when I'm holding an object, I can scale them down. If I don't hold an object, I can scale down or scale my scene up. Um, when you think about like, uh, I had this question yesterday, like what about motion sickness? So because you're the one controlling it and it's kind of like, uh, it's not so much the perspective that change on you because it just happens, what happens with some games, uh, since you're the one that doing all the input. So far I haven't had any uh, like bad experiences feeling uh, motion sick which I did have with like a, when I started using VR and playing a few certain games. 
Um, so if you're like, uh, 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 how do you call it, like cautious to try these things out because of that, like don't. Because for, for Gravity Sketch so far, or for any 3D sculpting software, I haven't had any issues with like feeling queasy or having to stop after a while. Um, it's more often than not that just my battery runs out, so I'll have to charge. Because <laughs> I tend to do this, I rather do this on like uh, just sitting around somewhere, either on the sofa or, uh, uh, but not being hooked up to my computer. Um, it just gives a little bit more freedom of motion. Um, so the only, sometimes the only problem with these things is if you play with volumes, like you cannot really make curves. <laughs> so you will have to do like extra volumes to kind of uh, make uh, curved things, or of course, you could say like when I screw that, I'm just gonna put in a new uh, stroke. And then of course you can uh, do all the round circles you want. One more question. Yeah. Uh, what about the feature set in general? Is there something you're missing? Um, or uh, you would like the, the developers to add some, some um, point or? Well, I asked if there's definitely a few kings. Like one of the things is that they so they do a mirrored mode, right? But they don't really have a thing where you can say like, okay, now I want my mirrored object to become actual, uh, like actual geometry. Like you kind of have to go. It's possible, but you have to do some weird steps where I'm kind of like, oh, please just, just make it so that we can uh, mirror, or and then just say, okay, this is now my object. Uh, so those type of things. And precision, like sometimes, even though I use this mostly to sketch and try ideas out, there's definitely been some times where I was like building a, a temple and I made all my weird looking, uh, what you call it, like uh, pillars and whatnot. And then I wanted to just put them in a grid at least and that they're still stuck to the ground floor. And that was atrocious. So I did ask them if they're planning to do any more like preciser, controls, but so far uh, it doesn't seem, well, they're trying, but it's not really there yet. So that's something I definitely see still lacking. Um, other than that, for, uh, like, I, I don't think this will be really a high-end modeler, so to say, at least not for my things, um, since I, I do believe their whole development, they're going more towards yeah, product design, like I mentioned before, rather than like concept artists. It's more that we just use it as a, as a byproduct. Um, but those type of things, like the lighting and materials, on one side you could say, yeah, that would be great if I could already do that here, or like paint textures to an extent. But on the other side, it's if it was that strong, it most likely wouldn't run natively on my headset, right? So uh, I'm okay with that sacrifice where they say like, well, okay, that, that's part you just have to do in a different software. Like you can still do, uh, you can put some texture still on there. Um, you can, ha you have a few presets of very basic um, like materials you can use, but it's, um, it's definitely not like uh, any other uh, 3D engine where you have uh, an unlimited uh, amount of things you can do. Um, so yeah. Of that. And let's see. Let's see, let's do some feet. Uh, let's first get some extra toe in, or two maybe. And what about importing uh, models? Like, could you import a 3D model that you already have and then edit it or uh, um, add something to it? So add it, I'm actually not sure. You can you can do your own models. Like what you see, uh, a lot of the people that uh, do car designs with this do, they have like a, a file with uh, like few chassis, like with just the wheels and the undercarriage, uh, because for them it's more about like the, the hood design uh, and the, the flow of the shapes there. So you see a lot that those people actually do a lot of, um, uh, what do you call it? They will actually import quite a lot of models, um, but it's, uh, I haven't really tried that myself to have the extent. I know one friend of mine that also is a concept artist, he does import a lot of his models, uh, but he also said it's like at some point he does need his PC because it's just getting too heavy. Like it just doesn't really, I feel it doesn't really always uh, 
uh, what do you call it, it's not really optimized for software or for like geometry that's not made by a gravity sketch. Um, so, so yeah, that's, it's, uh, so I know we can, you can also just copy your shapes, which make it easy. Oh, let's make some a bit smaller. It's all birdie-like tendrils. There you go. And then uh, some, call it some hard. Yeah. So I find that to be too round, so I make the brush smaller so that the edge is a bit uh, harder. It's not as much fall up. And then you can just copy it over. See, and then you kind of have a little dinosaur or even birds, bird feet. And you could make those bigger as well. Put them over there. The original one go back there. So as you can see, it's it's just a really fast way of um, doing this. And the nice thing is, if you're a person that, uh, for example, does regular sculpting and you're used to like uh, uh, like with clay, you're used to the whole idea of I walk around my model. Since it is VR, I could just never touch the model and just start walking around it, look around corners and whatnot. A lot of people do it also for skill, and at some point they they kind of set the camera to be like, okay, I'm looking at it from this perspective, and yeah, that, that kind of works for me, right? So it's it's a pretty good tool of getting a feel of what it would feel like if you see um, something you're making, like what's the actual scale. Um, another cool thing which uh, which they've done in one of their later updates was they introduced a collaborative mode. So they have a, they have like a cloud system called landing page. Uh, you can pretty much like upload your creations there. You can even view your creations there in their web uh, browser. Um, but they also now made a thing where you can make rooms. And in these rooms, uh, I think up to eight people can collaborate. Of course, everyone needs to have like VR glasses. Uh, but you can theoretically just, yeah, make a room. And then for everyone that, uh, that has these glasses, just have a little sculpting session. Uh, it seems that uh, people or like students from the car industry, uh, they use it a lot to give like feedback to each other. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good tool set in my opinion. And for now it's still all free, which is uh, very, nice, very nice. So if you have a an, an, an VR system, definitely check it out. I think it's also free on Steam, like if you don't have an, an Oculus, like you're using the Valve Index or uh, what's the other one? Um, the Hive uh, should work as well. So it's uh, a... Yeah, mm, so let's add some more of these kind of bird feed like, I guess you call them scales or bones or nails. I actually don't know. I know they're there. Most of the time. And there we go. Well, it kind of works. Maybe I'll do a little, yeah, a bit bigger. As if there's a little skin folded here. There we go. Mm hmm. Yeah. The heel a bit thicker. Yeah. Um, you can, of course, if you're done with this model and you don't want it to be as, like, uh, I guess say, like patchy as it is now or blobby, um, you can just merge all your geometry later down the line and just, like, uh, remesh it in whatever software you have. Uh, I know a few people that, that take that route where they, they make very quick sculpts in, uh, in here and then just take it to ZBrush, remesh it, and then they just uh, make like a very high detailed version in, uh, in, oh, in, Z, in ZBrush instead. Um, but for just yeah, very organic workflow, this is great. Uh, J just a heads up, we're at uh, 30 minutes now. Okay, good. So let's say, uh, let's have a look-see. Let's say this is our base dinosaur, or what it is. So as you can see, it kind of has a bit of anatomy going on. Uh, let's make this one a bit 
I want a bit more sway in his tail. There we go. Uh, so let's say, okay, we want a, a person. Here's our person, even though I didn't really kept him well for skill. Uh, there's a layer system as well, as you can see, which is nice. So let's say we want to put this, this, this dude comes with the software. Like you have what are called prefabs. So I could just drag this dude, put it in here, and then we'll put it in my scene. Um, they have this also, for example, for, oh, I already did. They also have it for car chassis. So if you're actually a car designer, you can get one of these. Wait, why does it not work? Do something. It uh, doesn't work, but you can generate this thing. I've never used it, but it will generate a basic car chassis uh, to, uh, to work from. So I don't need this guy. But let's say, okay, we want this dude to kind of sit on this. So we would have to give him a little, uh, what you call it? Uh, a little saddle. So you can play around with getting his feet right, which is sometimes a pain. But you can change the rotation. So that one was more of like an, an uh, what you call it? like an IK solver, or the yeah, IK, I think, where bones are correlated to each other, right? They can pull and stuff. Uh, but um, you also have the ones where you can just turn the individual points, so that gives you a little bit more uh, control over, uh, ooh, this, this pain, this lag is broken. Uh, it gives you a little bit more control over how you want this uh, to sit. Of course, you can also increase your, uh, your selection thing, which would then make it, like, it would all try to rotate at the same time. And like this, let's do a bit like this, this, and this. There we go. Now I have at least a guy that's kind of sitting. Uh, and there we go. So if we think that that's kind of big enough, just put them there. And then we'll I'll select the layer again, or I'll make a quick new one, new layer. Uh, and then we can start on the, uh, what did I mention? The saddle, for example. So let's see, for this one, I will probably start with some lines. So you can, for now, I've been using round brushes, but they have a few presets. So they also have that you can make a square one. Um, in the settings, you can, or what it's settings, so you can also make it uh, uh, like flat or long, kind of depending on where you are in this little uh, spine there. So I use this a lot for when I'm making planks or houses, right? So you just do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and maybe like do like this, and bam, there you go. And you're someone that can live off sea. <laughs> but, it's, uh, but it also works great to make belts. You can turn the end caps off so you don't have the, uh, it's really just a square. And let's do a little bit of this. So if I now want to make some belts, I could just uh, start to make these type of, um, shapes here, here, boom, there we go. And uh, let's give these, just for clarity's sake, a different color. Mm, a bit, let's say, brownish or red, also good, just so we can see. And, and the layers work kind of like in Photoshop, like mm -hmm. just in 3D, so you can turn them um, off and on. Wait, sorry, can you say that again? Bit, uh... um, the, the layers, they're working yes. kind of like in Photoshop, but in um, 3D? Yeah, so it, it's mainly for organizing. So the few options you have is you can set solo layers so that you can just see this layer, right? Uh, you can just turn it on and off, and you can lock it, and you can do a little bit of transparency. Um, but that's kind of it. Like, there's no multiplier options or uh, or stuff like that. But it's it's enough for, for this what you, at least what I find it to be mm -hmm. like a knob. Uh, this round. I'll try and create kind of the base. So I'll look. Oh, put it to this guy again, because I'm just like a bit more control. So, uh, and then I'm gonna scale it up a bit anyways. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the points you can control by either, why is this so? How about not lock? There you go. Why is this so not in the middle? There we go. There. Um, you can either move the points. You can also change the, 
like rotation of them as well, like uh, the way they rotate, um, which is, is nice, especially for when you're using these like flats to try and create a, a um, oh shit, um, ugh. trying to create like a, the uh, the straps. What I just tried to do. No, it's smaller. It's smaller, please. There we go. Uh, as you can see, they also lock. That's pretty nice when you're doing like a mirror option. They kind of lock in the middle. Uh, but yeah, so this could be, uh, this could, in my head, this is kind of like the, the padding slash fabric that might be uh, underneath the, uh, that this guy doesn't have an absolutely atrocious ass after uh, driving for a long time. And, and we do one that's a bit more, could be leather. So that's kind of how I am imagining these things. Like, okay, this this is leather, uh, this is fabric. Um, you can, of course, immediately color code this for yourself, that you just say like, okay, I'm just gonna give everything a color uh, so that I know later on in Photoshop, you can do like, or I mean, sorry, in Blender or something, you can often select by material, right? So if you give, Everything, a material that you kind of have in your head, like, okay, this should have a separate material. Um, if you already do that from the start, then it's a lot easier to, uh, to reselect everything in, uh, in, uh, in Blender. Because that's one thing I kind of forgot. They have an exporter for OBJ, I think for, uh, well, we can look at it in a bit, but for a few ones. But I do have to say what I'm really uh, missing is uh, some of the, uh, options of where if I make a groups of something, I would love that that still is a group in uh, Blender, but that's at the moment not the case. So that would definitely also be something I'm like, would be great if they at some point in the future uh, add that. Why is this now absolutely turned? Uh, ah, there we go. And let's see. Do this one a bit bigger, maybe a bit more. Yeah, if there's more questions, keep them coming. Uh, <laughs> and now some more volume. So, Ah uh, no, I guess I'll do a, a few tinier ones. This, oh yeah, go on here. Now I can place the dude a bit better. And he's just he's just really having a chill here. Um so then for like for example now I want to do a few ropes, but that I do put free for, uh like free drawing on and I put the end cap spec so everything's right. And for example there, I would just start to now uh, try and draw as if it's like, a, I don't know, just some rope going around it. Maybe a bit smaller. Some ropes that hold it all together. We can of course quickly edit that to make sure it doesn't intersect too much. But even if it would intersect, if it's not like the best it doesn't really matter, because these are, like I see the working in VR, really not to get like my final uh, 3D out of this. It's really important for me to be able to quickly just try these things out, right? And if I later say like, oh, I want a different hat, I just copy this thing or take this hat off and I just copy it a few times uh, and try different shapes and then just put them back to see uh, does this work? There's also an option, that's, as you can see, there's quite an option. There's also a snap mode, and uh, where is it? Is it planar? Or oh, it's this one, the projection mode. So with projection mode, it will actually uh, stay on the, the, oh, on the thing, so you can keep drawing exactly uh, where, like it will just keep, follow your mesh, right? So if I would want something like this, uh, it's a weird thing, but now, but this one needs to be a bit more in the middle. So now we have a little decorative, uh, yeah, a little decorative thing on the back. Make it a bit more tribalized. Uh, so it's I had a question. Uh, but I'm now turning it off. 
that is not really yeah. good. Uh, only uh, yes. a question. Uh, yeah. Can you also uh, remove material or do things like Boolean operations uh, with them? So that's not really as far as I know. There is the option of, so you also have here, so this is what I've been using mostly, right? What a, what a lot of people do for like the draw cars, uh, let me give a quick example. So what they will do a lot is they will like sketch out the shape of their car, right? And they will go like, okay, here's like my wheel. Uh, this goes straight. Uh, then another one here and I don't know, like something like this, right? And then they will start to draw all the, the shapes within um, like what they would need to make this car work. And then there's like some really nice tools, uh, which is the surface tools, where you can, in essence, uh, like see this, you can pretty much draw a surface, right? Um, but there's also a lot of options, like that there is, you select one line, this line, and then you can see another line, oh, not, not like this, so this and this, like these two, for example, and then you can fill the space in between. Right, so these are really nice tools for them to say like, okay, uh, I have in essence my sketch and I just fill it in with, with like big shapes now. Um, so the surface tool for them is really important. Um, there's also this one like uh, that you say uh, that you can quickly make uh, lofts, right? Like uh, uh, where you also have like a lot of control where you can make them thick, oh, that's the wrong one. Mm. No, I don't see anything. Else. Wait, hey, thick. So there we go. Um, where you can make it thicker, where you could, like, stuff like this, and you can just keep, you know, you can make a, a thing from this, right? Um, but the real Boolean stuff is not in here. The other one they have is uh, just regular primitives. Um, so if I would just quickly grab one uh, here in these shapes, if you go to your settings, you can actually convert them to subdivided objects. And then it's a lot more like a regular 3D, right? So you could extrude them uh, and uh, I think also insert. I haven't used these a whole lot. Or collapse layers, there's baked mirrors. Um, so you see also a lot of people doing this later on, like they, they convert their surfaces to, uh, to regular subdivided surfaces and work, work that way. But unfortunately, the whole bullying stuff doesn't work. I mean, now, and now all of a sudden we have this car here. What's this car doing? Which one is it? <laughs> cool, there. thank you. The chassis, go away. Um, so it's, uh, for that, for example, if you really wanna do like the Boolean workflow, then you're better off doing the, um, the voxel versions of uh, uh, VR. Uh, Adobe has two, one is called Medium, uh, which is still free but they only work on PC. Like you cannot have that running native on the uh, uh, headset, unfortunately. Uh, but what they do have now is if you have the substance design, uh, I think subscription from Adobe, where you pay like monthly, unfortunately, uh, they now have a substance 3D modeler and it's a weird hybrid between uh, a desktop version and VR. So you would just do quickly some on your desktop and then you would just put your headset on and you would do some on your headset and you can take your headset off and you can immediately continue on uh, your, uh, on the desktop version. Um, so that's something they're trying out and that whole system is like adding, uh, subtracting, and then it will like blend the shapes in between. Um, so it's just different. Yeah, it's the, the whole Boolean doesn't really work in, uh, in Gravity Sketch, but, it's, uh, but it definitely works. Uh, in those ones. And so let's see, we want like a sleeping bag, I guess. Let's see how we're gonna do a sleeping bag. I wanna say this, put the end caps off. Oh, and give me, give, give me more control. I'm like, maybe, maybe it's just a, not a sleeping bag, it's like a carpet. It's like he's trading carpets, I don't know. And I, th I like to make little stories for these dudes. This is like a, a carpet trader. So we have one that I think I'm just gonna duplicate it again. Uh, come on, give me just, okay, that doesn't work that well as I imagined. Uh, I'll just put it up a bit, so go here. 
Well, you just added this one to be, I don't know, a bit tinier, but not the end bit, tiny bit, sorry. We well, just push this in so you never see it. And then we get a little bit of weird carpets. And then we draw some uh, rope around that. To that. Uh, end cap spec, please. Yeah. Um, but it's really, uh, I'll, I'll be here all day, so if at some point you're like, hey, you know what, I want to give this a go, uh, I could just let it run, uh, like, natively. Uh, if you feel like testing this out for yourself, uh, play around with some of the tools, so feel free. Um, but it's definitely a nice, like, a different way of working for a change. Like, we're always busy on the computer uh, with the mouse. It's actually, it gives a lot of freedom, this, to do this, uh, this type of stuff. We have something here. Makes a little bit smaller. So you can also like merge objects, which I've done. Like I've just merged these little uh, ropes with this like thing, which I call a carpet. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it, it uh, sticks together. You can quickly ungroup them. Uh, let's see. Whoop. Whoa, horrendous. Um, there we go. This one here. Be a thicker one, there we go. Uh, and then at the end, maybe some more, like more of a bag. So I'll take more of the square one, I'll make it a bit smaller. I could just maybe do like, oh, that's the wrong one. I need volume. Uh, I could just do like a little, more of a, a bag type volume. Yeah. Ah, whoops, uh, there we go. So you have a, an undo, of course, which is pretty unlimited, I feel like. like I can't really remember a time that I couldn't undo, which is nice. Uh, like here, you, you just have like a timer that you can just keep uh, reverting back. Um, do this. How's the time looking? Anyone? You got like 15 minutes or so? 15, okay, oh, that works. Uh, maybe Could also be a bit more, I mean, okay. depending on what you want to show. So, let's just do it like this. Here we have a little little backpack. Uh, let's make this one. Let's put it like this. And I don't know, I could attach it to here. Um, sometimes it's a bit finicky, but most of the time it works pretty well. Scales down. There we go. Yeah. So, and if we say, like, we're happy with this, uh, of course, we can do the whole classic. Uh, eh. Of course, this is a um, an animal that's been tamed, so we can give it the whole put a little pipe in its mouth, and uh, then add some rope. It's gonna make it look like it's yip, yip, yip. Now we just we this dude. Oh, that's a lot of. Uh, you can in your in your like uh, curves you can remove points to make them smoother, or if you want to have more control, it's also fine. Um, yeah, it's a it's a very versatile software in my opinion. Soon do this and then maybe put the hand more here and this hand a bit more there, and he's just chilling. Doing all the chilling. So, uh, what does he have? Oh, he has also like a little, I guess it's like banner to promote his his business. Um, since it's on one side, I'll quickly turn off the scene uh, mirroring. You can also do it separately for uh, like every line you make is just the setting is mirrored, right? So in essence, I wouldn't necessarily have to do this, what I just did. like remove the mirroring, uh, but I tend to just do it to keep it uh, in mind for myself that mirror is on, and if I want to do something which is not mirrored, then I need to just turn mirroring off. Um, and now, for example, if you want to do a flag, it's best to grab a surface, a uh, custom surface, something like this, and we just say, I don't know, like, uh, Bam, 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 bam. Oh, 
I know we can play a bit with the shape of it. This is still way too big. Moving it up the back. Um, uh, where we could add some more, let's see, I want lines, you can select lines, if I find out, ah, here we go, why, why, oh, it's this one, um, so I want more lines here, uh, I'll just go back to, ah, here we go. So now you can actually even play a bit with, if I push these guys backwards, where's the other one? We're missing one. Where's it? Oh, yeah. So you can play them forward and backward to kind of create a little droopy feel. So there's a little bit of movement in the flag. It's really nice. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. One more question. Do you mostly use it at home, the tool, or also at work? Um, I have not 100% integrated it into my workflow. Um, I do want to keep using it more, but the only, I guess this is like the only little downside of these, these things is that it's, it's, it is a type of weird commitment if you haven't fully integrated yet, because there, there's a few people I know, uh, like for example, Darky from the demo scene, he uses it really for like everything, for work, not for work, uh, which is great. Uh, but when I'm at work, it's still like kind of a commitment to, to bring my glasses, then to set up the glasses and take the glasses on and then uh, keep doing that, right? With the, also the whole idea that you could be interrupted anytime. Um, it's, so that's why at the moment it's more at home. Uh, but I would love at some point to be at a stage where it's just fully integrated into my workflow. Especially if you're also like suffering from, I don't know, carpet tunnel or whatever, this is actually a great way to avoid it. Um, yeah, so, point. I'll quickly do uh, a save. Let's do a save, save, there we go. Um, so if you now would want to post, now we kind of run into the issue that um, it's mirrored, right? So if I would try and move this thing, it will move the other leg as well, so that doesn't really work for posing. This is a bit the only, in my opinion, the only thing that's kind of, uh, how do you say that, like, you have to do a weird step, which I don't really enjoy, uh, but if I turn off what is the saddle at the moment, right, because we don't need that, I'll turn off the ref as well, because it's mainly about uh, the, the ref, the scale, the, and now I just see the dinosaur. So what I now need to do, which is absolutely frustrating, is I need, for example, to grab, I'll make these into a part, because I want to have these, which is like the heads. Um, and then I have to drop it into this thing, where you put in like new objects in your scene. And somehow when you do that, it, it decides to, uh, where did it go? Hello? Hello, head, where are you? Uh, try again. Yes. Where did it go? Or is it super big, super tiny? Where did it go? I don't know. Oh, I know where it went. Oh, never mind. I know exactly where it went. It went into the layer that I turned off. Maybe, right. maybe it's under the carpet? Uh, no. Um, so I will just put this into uh, the creature layer and now select the creature layer. So we're working. Mm -hmm. So now the head is one piece. It's not mirrored anymore. Great. And this is then unfortunately the thing we'll have to do for all these parts that we might want to move. Uh, why is, oh, well, doesn't matter. Uh, let's just do it like this. Now we have the legs. Uh, put the legs through this weird process. Ooh, that was a weird little feedback there. There we go. So now, now it has legs that are, in essence, not mirrored anymore. So now if we ungroup them, we could actually go in and say, like, uh, let's uh, quickly make two, like, uh, two little volumes where we say, like, okay, this is like a rock. I don't know he has to stand on with one leg. And the other rock is like, I don't know, like here. So just do it like this. 
Easy, simple, rock, rock. But bigger rock. Hello? Big rock. Like this. And let's say uh, this thing goes. Yeah. Um, and now we would want to pose him in a way that he like walks on the uh, rocks, right? So we would take this, our base curve that we started with, and that will be our main line to change this anatomy. So we would kind of like just move uh, the lag in a way that it feels natural for it to be, uh, I think we might need an extra one for the toes. Double check. So this now looks a bit more like it's walking upwards. And then you just take the parts that you made and just kind of place them back uh, where they were. Uh -huh. You could of course scale these or like uh, what you say, like make little groups of them uh, to make it easier for yourself. So if we say, it's a bit like this, uh, or maybe, yeah. Something like this, but then we just say again, like ungroup and then move the toes up a bit so they can just feel that they are like digging into the, uh, digging into the ground. Uh, move some of the bits back. There will also be people that will just immediately put them into uh, like a pose. But if you're actually planning to maybe uh, use one of these models that you made as like a, to remesh, it's pretty good to keep them in like a more static pose rather than like a, a dynamic pose. Uh, well, I say one here. Feels a bit more natural. So here. So, so this leg is already a bit more annoying to make these butt muscles push a bit. So that's one, and then the other one, we could say, exact other way, right? So it will be more, more like this. Uh, and then we could do, 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 take all this, make it a group. There, take all right. Yeah. Take all this stuff over here. There you go. And then the rest of this like lag mass just puts also kind of like. And as you can see, it's not like it's not. I'm not putting them in the exact same spot back as they were before. Uh, still playing a bit with like, okay, how should this shape now feel? And it's not like they'll see the same few anyways, right? Um, but yeah, with this you can kind of uh, move your things around. Like we could turn the head of the creature, have it look a bit to the other side, uh, maybe play a bit with his tail where it's, since we're going up, maybe his tail's a bit more down. Uh, oh, why, why, why are you being Hard. So these are still mirrored, right? So there you, there you see you kind of run into the uh, two problems, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, let's say this is it. This is what we want. Um, then now would just be the thing where you put on everything, um, all the layers. Uh, let's see. So we will put on the, what do we need? We need to scale ref. Bam. Uh, was there anything else? No. No, no. So this would be, let's say this would be like our little dinosaur thing. Um, then you can just now say, uh, export to export. Shows everything is gonna export, which is nice. And then you have OBA, FBX, and this one I don't even know, IGS. Uh, <laughs> so that, uh, you just export. You can say on device or you can, Turn this thing on and then we'll go to your cloud. So this is really nice for when you're not wired to your computer. You can just upload it directly to this like uh, online cloud they have. Uh, you sign up for that, but it's it's not it won't cost you money. You also don't have to give you like your credit card details or some shit like that. Uh, this is the workshop. Very nice. So that's exported. And I'll actually take my glass off. Oof. There we go. Um, and we will go straight into Blender. So in Blender, I had set up a quick scene. Oh boy, uh, I don't have uh, one second. I hope this won't 
make any loud noises. I forgot my mouse. Can I do uh, 3D with a trackpad? It's absolutely... Where did the mouse go? Who is my mouse? Duh, okay, then we'll try without mouse. Yeah. Ah, perfect. Mouse. Love it. Hey. So we have a mouse. Um, so this scene I can already set up. It's uh, done with the Yama. It's a console artist called Yama. He yeah, does uh, some really cool stuff. Um, he's also one of the people that kind of inspired me to get into VR. Same as another, an old colleague of mine called um, uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Allen. Uh, he still works at Guerrilla Games. Um, and the nice thing is, wait, where did he, where did he save this thing? Uh, downloads? No. Mm. Documents? No. No, let's have a look here, VR. Where, where, where the hell did you save this thing? Uh, let's have a look. Quick look, see. Mwah. Give me. No, where's the other one? All right. Okay. Oh, export. Yeah, great. Yeah, but where? where? Where are you saving, my dude? Ah, okay. I see. I see. Oh. And was it users? Something, something. That's probably, uh, let's go back here. Percent, app data, percent. Oh, well, yeah, I see gravity sketch somewhere. Gravity sketch. Where are you? Oculus? No. Oh, great. Hmm. Local storage. Ah. Why the hell did this go? Ah, here. I am a little dumb. And uh, there we go. Okay. Let's copy this folder over. So, we go here, we go here. Um, and we import the mesh. So, there we go. Um, so, there is a few things you have to, will have to do. It comes with like custom normal data and stuff like that, um, which you unfortunately will have to uh, get rid of. Uh, best way to do that is to just, uh, there, well, there's two ways. There's one is a plugin that will do it for you. Uh, what I tend to do is kind of quickly group the things that are going to be the same material, and then you just click here on clear custom stuff, and bam, there's no weird stuff. For these ones, what I mentioned before, here you can say, um, in select, you can say, where is it? Select by type, no, our objects. Uh, where was it? Uh, select, uh, select all by type, no. Where the hell is my, I uh, linked, sorry. Select linked, and you can do material, and as you can see, it will grab everything that is la pink. Uh, so we join that together, uh, clear the custom normal data, uh, so that won't be problematic. And then same for here, uh, select, uh, linked material, it's like one, because otherwise it won't do it. And uh, control join and clear custom. So I have some materials already in here um, to use. So let's say we make the rocks a weird. Well, that one is not so good. Uh, let's try the brown. Oh, that's better. So we take the brown, maybe make this guy. So these one are these are like clay materials, which I kind of like. Um, I'll do a quick bit of scaling of UVs. Uh, and this is the mesh you get, by the way. So it's, it's amazing. It's very well made. 
Um, a bit smaller. There we go. And then this will get a little bit like lighter. Is this a good one? Or meh. Yeah, it will work. And the guy will make white. Let's just do that. Yeah. No way. Um, so this scene is already set up. Oh, this is really small. It's great. So I'll increase size a bit. Uh, let's see what it looks like in rendered view. Pretty good. Uh, that. Oh, let's just put it like this. And we just render. And then, as you can see, it's, it's, it will give you, in my opinion, when you have some good materials, can even be something else, uh, it will give you a pretty good base that you could use to do uh, like any other drawing you want. Um, yeah. And that is kind of it. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, if there are still questions, let me know. Uh, come find me if you want to give it a go. Uh, yeah, hope you all enjoy. This was absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There Any we more go. questions here from the crowd? Last questions? No? No. All right, you can find Oni here in the front on the left side, if you want to try it out. And uh, yeah, thanks again. Give it a big head. And Thank you. Guys, test. <laughs>